All right, y'all, we're back with another Rotten Mango video reaction. Today, well, we don't have, well, we do have, we do have murder. We have murder today. Um, this video was called Pregnant, oh my God. Pregnant wife pushed off 110 foot cliff while visiting National Park with loving husband. Okay. I didn't see the pregnant part. Um... You know, I did. I, I I do think about the comment. Uh, I forgot your name, but I do remember the comment that said, "I don't think these videos are for. It's healthy." <laughs> I mean, I mean, no, but these stories are very crazy, and I want to watch them. So we're about to watch this. Um, yeah. Have you ever wanted to watch more videos than the thousands of ones that are already on my channel? You know, like the ones that I can't show on YouTube. Uh, I, I got you. I have a Patreon with three tiers. This is what you will get per tier. If all of you like to read it. Honestly, I love it. We be going crazy on the Patreon. But I'm going to let you be the judge of that. So y'all go ahead and check out the Patreon. And let me know what you think. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for supporting. And thank you for everything. Now, let's get back to the video. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada -boom. So June of 2019 is when this case takes place. A mm, Chinese couple in their early 30s, they take this little vacation in a national park in Thailand. Mm -hmm. This is kind of pertinent to the story, but the couple, they're Chinese citizens, but they live in Thailand full time. But even within Thailand, they're like, let's take a mini vacation to a different part of Thailand Ooh, to go visit this national park. We're going to be staying at a hotel. It's going to be nice, like a weekend getaway of sorts. So they live in Thailand. They speak Thai to a degree. This is very pertinent to the story. Honestly, I the thing about me is like, is anybody else afraid of like going edges of things, just like off just just because? Not even off a sense of like I have a fear of heights, but like just because like, bro, why am I on the edge of something? Like you know those you know those pictures that they have of people like on the edge of tall ass buildings and just looking down like some type of flex for the internet or something. And I'm like, bro, two things could happen. You could drop your phone or you could drop you. I don't, the, the risk and reward isn't, no, no, nigga, no. What the hell? Husband and wife duo, they're expecting a baby on the way. The wife is actually three months pregnant. Oh. This is kind of like a cute little, let's just take our mind off of all the stress that we have going on and just enjoy nature. Now, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like with, with Chinese couples in particular, there is this level of extreme protectiveness over the mother, like over pregnant woman. It's just kind of embedded in the culture, at least from what I've seen. What I You know, like how it, how it should be. You should protect it. The woman with a kid, yes. I've perceived usually everything is that for everybody what the mom drinks or eats it has to be deemed not even just healthy but more than healthy. They're told to not even leave the house or even shower a month, a full month okay, after right, giving right, birth right, because it's uh, bad for their immune systems. I don't know, about I don't know that. how many I'm... people still follow these traditions, but I, I get the feeling that there is a level of like, oh no, like the husband is very catering to the wife, babying the wife. So just imagine how frantic this husband is when his pregnant wife falls off a hundred foot cliff while they're vacationing at this national park. 110 feet, that's equivalent to an 11 story building. Ambulances rush to the scene. The husband is freaking out. I mean, he's screaming to get past these first responders who are trying to save his wife's life, you know? He's running, trying to grab her hand. He's crying out to them in Thailand. Wait a minute, she's like actually alive though at this moment? What the fuck? How? Like shaking the first responders. You have to do something. You have to do something. My wife wandered out alone and she fell. Oh my God, please. You have cap. to save my wife. She's pregnant. That's cap. And they're like, okay, like let us do our job. He's like so distraught. There's no way to even calm him down. He's running his hands through his hair. He just keeps screaming and broken tie. Please, you have to help my wife. He knowing, knowing a Stephanie Sue video, there's going to be a twist. So I don't trust it. You not really frantic, my nigga. You capping. He's got tears streaming down his face. And at one point, he's just frantically holding onto his wife's hand. And he leans in close to her face. He's like running his hands across her cheeks. She's still alive? She's still alive. She's yeah. conscious. Oh, fuck. She can't talk. She can't move. But she's conscious. She's like in a state of shock. Oh. 
and he's running his hands across her face, across her cheeks, and he whispers in Mandarin, so no one else can understand him, but this is like their language that they share together. And he whispers, no one else understands Mandarin here. I knew it. There are no cameras on the clip. I fucking knew. If you don't want to die, you better behave. I knew it. I knew it. I freaking knew it. I knew it. You lying sack of shit. Not you, Stephanie. I'm talking about that man. You lying sack of dog. You lie. You, 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 you. Mm. The wife is laying on the stretcher, unable to speak, unable to move. And she's looking nah. at her husband. His face looks like the face of pure evil. It's filled with burning hatred. Why the and fuck anger. did he do that? And almost immediately, it's like he snaps out of it. His eyes soften back up and he looks back up at the first responders and begs them again in broken Thai to save his precious wife. That's like a horror movie. This is going to be, oh, Jesus. And he screams about how he will die without his wife. Oh, my God. See, now, okay. Rotten Mango featuring a new setting. As always, full show notes are available at RottenMangoPodcast.com. This okay. is another case that centers around a Chinese couple. Um, they're Chinese citizens. Most of the sources that we found were in Mandarin. So we did have the support of our wonderful Chinese researchers on this case. But hey. as always, let us know if anything was lost in translation or miscommunicated. But with that being said, trigger warning. Let's get into it. Trigger warning. The trigger wife, warning. Ning, N-I-N-G is her name, had Ning. 17 bone fractures throughout her entire body. Oh. Yeah. Well, even her eyes were at risk since the skin around her eyes had lifted. I've never heard of oh that before, God. but they were really scared that they weren't going to be able to save her vision. Thankfully, they were able to. Every part of this woman's body was like a fragile, broken piece of glass that doctors are struggling oh, no. to piece back together. They even showed her her own x-rays while she was laying motionless on the hospital bed. And she looked like she looked like if someone had taken a porcelain vase and threw it at the wall, like chucked it at the wall and it scattered and shattered into like a bajillion different small pieces. God and now they damn. have to like glue it back together. Every part of her body was basically fractured and shattered. Fuck. She was lucky to be alive. That's what the doctors kept telling her. I'm going to be honest, bro. If my shit fucked up like that, I just take me out. I, mm -mm. I can't. I can't. No. Just let me go. I, I don't... Because at the end of the day, like, recover, that recovery process is fucking terrible. Like, imagine... Bro, I don't even want you to imagine that. Don't imagine that. Because Close she's in off. such a fragile state, because she's expecting a child, she's hooked up to several different machines that are providing life-saving well, care. Well, if I'm pregnant, then, She's in and out yeah. of consciousness. For the first few days, she couldn't even speak. I don't know if it was the shock. I don't know if it was all the tubes running in and out of her body. She could not speak. She did not have the ability to talk. Mm. She's in and out of consciousness. And it's like a fever dream. It's like a nightmare, really. Every time she woke up, she would panic. She's like thinking, oh my God, where am I? Then she would look around, see all these scary tubes and wires connected to her body. And then she would remember. All the memories would start oh, flooding in. No. She was at the hospital. She had fallen off a cliff. She got pushed. And just as she calmed herself down, she would glance around the hospital room, and right there in the corner is her husband. Oh, fuck. You. And her heart rate would send the machines beeping. He was still there. He was still watching her. He was almost glaring at her from the corner of the room. What the fuck? Why? Sometimes he would walk up to her while she's laying strapped up in this hospital bed, run his fingers through her hair, and his face just showed like utter hatred for her i don't know if i've ever been looked at like with that type of face but i can only imagine it's so unsettling like genuinely someone hates you so much for whatever reason she didn't even understand who this man was this didn't feel like her husband or at least not the husband that she had known for years it's like he was possessed by evil possessed by like a killer or something I feel like, I feel like, you know, honestly, one of the most betraying things that I could probably experience is like probably not being cheated on by my wife, but my wife turning into like a whole different person, just like just changing like that, that bro, that would, that would probably break my heart because why the fuck did you, why did you act like this this whole time? 
one, how the hell did you even keep up this facade for this long? And, and now, now you're just a different person, and like you just changed. Like I feel like, bro, that would break my heart even more than being cheated on. You know what I'm saying? That, oh my god! And imagine if she cheated on me and that, oh, pow, pow, double kill, oh, double homicide. I don't like that. Since Ming, was I mean, like she shot me, not me shooting her. I could have, that could have looked away. Mm. I'm the one that got shot, y'all. Me. Me. Feel bad for me. She was unable to move or talk. She spent most of her days just Ugh. reliving, reliving the incident over and over in her mind as she's staring up at this hospital ceiling. Mm. It all took place June of 2019. It's always June. You had asked his wife, Ning, to go to a national park in Thailand. That's And pretty. she was a little hesitant because when you hear oh. national park, you're thinking, that sounds like a strenuous activity. Like, I am three months pregnant. I don't know if I should be hiking up and down a mountain right now, Real right? Shit. You told her, of course, I considered that. Like, it's not that intense. I made sure to look up reviews. There's a trail. And everything is going to be perfect. I've planned it to a T. Like, don't you want to get out and get some fresh oxygen for the baby, too? Boy. Not you? only are you not going to be exhausted, but this is going to be a much needed vacation from all of the work stress, all of the stress of prepping for this baby. And it's, it's going to be fun. It's like going to be a reset for our family. Reset for... But when they get to the national park, everything is just going the wrong way. Literally, oh. everything is going wrong for the couple. So oh, usually fuck. this park is filled to the brim with visitors and tourists. Uh -huh. And when they arrived the first day, it was jam-packed, which kind of adds to a sense of, um, like, easiness. You know, it's a sense of ease. Imagine being out in the wooded cliffs alone. I feel like I would prefer if it's packed with tourists. Yeah. yeah. Even yeah. though they're strangers, it's just like, oh, okay, at least I know a lot of people come here. Yeah. But every minute... It felt like someone is physically dragging the sun down. The gloom started taking over. There was this gray, blurry tint to everything. The and hell? the couple knew it. All the other visitors, all the other tourists had gone home. What? And Ning is looking around. She's starting to feel a bit nervous. Like, what if there's some sort of animal or predator out in the woods, like by the cliffside? The and she turns to her husband. Hey, I know you planned this all out, but do you think we should start heading back soon? Like, what if it rains or something? It's getting really cloudy. You insisted everything was going to be fine. He's like, no, it's going to be better than fine. Actually, it'll be even more romantic since it's just the two of us enjoying the view alone. He practically skipped higher up to the mountain, to the cliff. Is that shit not romantic, boy? All these rocks and shit? No lights, no LEDs, no flowers. The flowers we got is probably weeds and dandelions. Well, dandelions are pretty cool, but nigga, this shit not romantic. What? Side. And Ning is wondering... What has gotten into my husband? This is the guy that for years, he has been petrified of heights. But oh, now he's going heck? over willingly to the cliff's edge, not even like looking down, just soaking in the views, the surroundings. That's one. She's so confused. Nah, nah. And she's so relieved when he finally suggests, you know what? I think we should head back to the hotel now. But before the weekend was over, just a day later, he's like, hey, you want to go to the national park again? What? She's like, again, we went, we saw everything there was to see. And he's like, no, 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 I was looking online. And actually, they said that it's the best when we go during sunrise. There's even like this secret local spot to, to get the best views of the sun rising amongst the mountains. It's, it's just incredible. Like, when else are we going to have the time to see this type of thing? When else are we going to come all the way over here? When we have a baby, it's going to be so rough. We're not going to be able to travel anywhere for at least a few years, right? At first, she's a little hesitant, but she'd already been there. She already kind of knew the vibe. Ugh. Maybe it wouldn't be too bad. And the views were pretty, even though it was gloomy. So maybe it would be more incredible during dawn. What? So the next day at 3.30 a.m., the couple check out of their hotel and make their way to the top of the mountain. Mm. Ning noticed that her husband was in a rather pensive mood. I mean, maybe it's like the fact that they're hiking up a cliffside before the sun rises. Maybe that's... What does pensive mean? Let me do my Googles. That wasn't in the SAT. Engaged in, involving, or reflecting deep or serious thought. Oh, so he was focused on killing her. All right. Adding to it, or maybe it's being alone with nature. But he turns to his wife and is like asking all these pensive questions. Pensive. Like, in this lifetime, babe, do you have any regrets? Oh, hell no. <laughs> Bitch, what the fuck is you asking me that shit for? We're on the side of a cliff. You... You go, mm-mm, mm-mm, no. 
it's so random, but she's thinking, okay, I mean, it makes sense. It's the type of conversation maybe couples have when they're hiking. No. So she genuinely thinks about it for a moment. Probably. She has no. a beyond successful career. Her husband is working really hard recently to make their home feel ready for their baby. It's cliche, but yeah, there's things that she maybe regrets a little bit, but she would never redo anything. Mm -hmm. So she smiles and she says, no, I don't think so. No regrets. No regrets. And he just smiles at her and he takes the lead. He climbs higher and higher up the mountain. And once they get really high, I'm talking like 100 feet off the ground, up in the mountain, like the cliffside mountain, Yu starts pointing towards the cliff edge, saying that he read online that this is the specific spot that locals, it's like a secret spot for locals for sunrises. Boy, fuck it's you. the best view. No, he even said nigga. that there's paintings left behind from ancient civilizations from thousands of years ago kind of tracked because a lot of this national park has these guided pathways and these beautifully preserved relics from the past mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then he's saying this is one that isn't preserved it's just been left in the open because nobody really knows about it except for a few locals and they posted about it online like where is it i'm so confused literally on the cliff's edge what like outside of the cliff like, this is the mountain, right? There's a mountain. Yes. Uh -huh. They're on the mountain, 100 feet in the air. Yeah, right. And he's like, right at the cliff, on the ground, near the very edge, there's these paintings. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, and they're like okay. getting, they're getting degraded through the weather. So yes. who knows how long this will last. So he's saying, go stand by the cliff, poke your head out, and you're going to see this beautiful art. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And Ning is like, okay let me go and what? you is going first right so ning walks towards the area and she wasn't expecting to go all the way up to the cliff's edge since they had walked off the designated trail already yeah. but they're about three feet away from the cliff's edge when she looks around and she's like wait i don't see any of the drawings that you're talking about and it doesn't really look like people come here there's what? no even footmarks or some sort of eroded pathway there's nothing it's i, I think we should go back to the trail She's like, I feel like this is a little dangerous. You ignores her and completely just what? ignores her completely and keeps walking towards the cliff's edge. And she's shocked once again because this is her husband who is known to have acrophobia. And trust me, as someone who is beyond terrified of heights, you will never catch me doing this, even if the view is spectacular. You Bro, the thing is, like, I don't think... What is it called when you don't have... I think it's called acrophobia, but when you don't have, like, that fear of heights... But, like, when you look down, you just have that urge to. It's not funny, but I know there's a name for that. Is there a name for that? It's not, like, on no, like, I'm trying to, like, actually, like, you know, end my life. But it's, like, that curiosity would be, like, hmm. What if I do a, a Jeff Hardy swanton bomb off of here? Like, I don't know what that's called. Somebody in the comments, please tell me what that's called. I it's like it's like when you see when you're looking at a fire, you just want to put your hand in a fire. Like something like like touch the stove. Am I a child? I don't know. You will never catch me just like gallivanting towards the cliff's edge. Gallivanting. Especially if there's no railing. Like you will never see that in a million years. Hell no, I'm not doing and that And Ning is so worried about her own husband. She keeps begging him like, hey, babe, like let's walk back to the trail. Let's go. Let's go. But he just keeps going. Bitch, come on. She has no choice but to chase after him. Oh, no. And abruptly, he just stops near the cliff's edge. I don't like He's that. He's looking up at the sky, taking in the views. She's like, what is come over this guy? Like, what is going on? Is he pensive? What is he thinking about? And she looks up and she has to admit the view is incredible. Ma the sun is casting this orange hue on everything. And the air felt crisp, even for a hot June day in Thailand, because they were so high up. It just felt so, it felt so fresh. She was kind of running, but now she's slowing down and just slowly walking up behind him while admiring the sunrise. And when she gets close... Her husband turns around, hugs her tightly, kisses her on the cheek, and she's like smiling, you know? This moment right here is a moment that she would remember for the rest of her life. The two of them hugging in the glow of the sunrise on the mountainside cliff in Thailand. Like, yeah, their marriage had its ups and downs, but this is what love is about. This is a core memory for them. And her husband nestled his face into her hair and then brushed his lips on her ear. And he said, What the f Go die. 
and pushed his three-month pregnant wife off a 110-foot tall cliff with all his strength. He said, go die? He said, go die. How the fuck did she survive that? He kissed her on the cheek and said, go die. This, nigga's this a super was villain. the scene that Ning would play over and over in her mind while laying in that hospital bed, unable to speak, oh my unable God. to leave. She just laid there staring at her husband, who sat in the corner of the room, staring at her with just pure evil disgust on his what face. What the fuck? And then she would hear the door open to the room because she's in the ICU. She's got her own room. A nurse would come in and it's like a, a switch had been flipped. His face would immediately soften and he would go from being this evil guard of hell in the corner of her room to this loving husband um, who would ask about his wife's condition and if their baby was okay. And if there is absolutely anything that he can do for his wife, please just let him know. The Ning fuck? would try to communicate to the nurses with just her eyes like, I'm, st I'm terrified. My husband is the one that pushed me off the cliff. Like, something is wrong. You have to help me. You need him to leave. Like, please get him out of here. He's going to try and kill me again. Mm. But each time the nurses would smile at her and tell her, you're so lucky to have a husband like this. Oh, hell no. Nah. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't like that shit. No, no, no. It's like fucking with your mind. No. You're so lucky he's with you by your side. And no. don't worry. We're going to get you out of here. You're going to recover. Get nice him out of here. Get to go home with your husband and everything will be okay. Fuck that. The nurses had no idea that you would try to unplug Ning's life ass assistant devices while in the hospital. He's Where are the cameras? Y'all don't have no security guards? What? 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 Straight up tried to unplug her. To silence her once and for all. What's so crazy about this case is that Ning really didn't see any of this coming. It's not like her husband ever beat her. It's not like her husband ever threatened to kill her or did any oh. of these crazy, crazy things. I mean, they kind of had the perfect relationship before before he pushed her off a cliff. What the shit? Wow. Okay, maybe it wasn't like exactly perfect. There was a little bit of weirdness or a little bit of ups and downs. I mean, especially now that she had a lot of time to think about their relationship while she's in this hospital bed. One of the main things was she never even wanted to date you in the first place. Oh, my Literally, God. Ning did not have time to spend with friends, let alone a relationship, a boyfriend. She had basically not known a single day of rest in peace since the day that she had been born. I'm not even sure if ambitious is the right word to describe her. She was more unstoppable than anything. Like she had the ambition, she had the drive. And from the moment that she graduated university with a major in business development, I mean, this, this woman hits the ground running. She tried working at an insurance company, a travel agency. She went from an assistant in the travel agency to an operations managers in record time even got relocated to Thailand for the travel agency. She wasn't mm. even just sent to Thailand, like, hey, go work at our Thailand branch, right? No, she was tasked with opening up the agency's market in Thailand. Oh. Basically building it from scratch in a foreign country where she doesn't speak the language. Oh, like, shit. Like, I feel like I'd be terrified to see this woman's Google calendar. Like, I bet there was not <laughs> a single bit of white space for her to relax. Just <laughs> appointments, meetings, back to back. She would eventually quit the travel agency to start her own business. She would try a bunch of different things. And, you know, there would be failures. She tried a dried fruit business. She lost about $30,000 from that. She a hustler. Then she tried a trading business, which kind of took off. Then it evolved into a Chinese restaurant and a homestay location for Chinese citizens to come stay in Thailand. Mm. Oh, and shit. in the off chance, she's a hustler. In the rare chance that she had some free time, she was just like head deep in a Thai language learning book. So she's putting her roots down in Thailand. She's starting her businesses here. Wow. And she's thinking, yeah, I better learn the freaking language. It said that every single night, Early on in her career, so like most of her 20s, she only got three to four hours of sleep. She was focused, dedicated to making a name for herself. Every single day of her 20s was spent working her ass off and it paid off. By the time that she hit her milestone, her 30th birthday, she was successful. Hey. She had a net worth of over $3 million. Okay. I mean, she's killing it. Okay. She was a huge influence in the Chinese community in Thailand. A lot of Chinese citizens who would do business in Thailand or visit Thailand, they would rub shoulders with Ning. She was kind of the know-all be-all to Thailand. Where'd this fuck nigga come from? 
And you would think, you would think that her parents are like, you know what? I'm so proud of you. I would, I could never ask for a better daughter. But they were also like, okay, great. Why do you not have a boyfriend? I swear, bro, it's always. Bro. Oh, I don't know, mom. Maybe it's the fact that I spent like 120 hours a week on my business for the past decade. <laughs> Maybe because I'm a mogul and don't got no reason to get one of them. Why do I need that? I got this, nigga. I'm, I'm having. I'm ha why. Why, mama, why would I need a boyfriend right now? I'm still locked in. My net worth is three milli. <laughs> like, she's going crazy. Talking about a boyfriend. And you would that ignore shit. her parents, but, I mean, yeah. Sometimes she could feel it. She feels a little lonely. I mean, Sometimes her I mean, but that comes with it, though. That does come with it. If you, in all honesty, if you, like, if you have it and you doing your thing, if you focus on your career and stuff, that comes with it. You don't really have to have a relationship, but it would be nice, you know, but at the end of the day, it's like, eh, 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 what's more important? Priorities? Your pri you got to know where your priorities are. You know what I'm saying? Her house feels a little empty and like, maybe it is time to date. Mm. So prior to moving to Thailand, basically in college, she had two boyfriends. That's oh. it. Oh. She hadn't dated in like the past decade, over a decade. And ever since then, she's just focused on work, nothing else. The term boyfriend, like the idea of calling someone, oh, that's my boyfriend, it sounded so foreign to her. Oh, jeez. She's like, that is weird. Mm. She didn't even realize when someone was flirting with her. So during these networking events, men would try and come and make small talk with Ning, maybe slowly drop some cute little jokes here and there, and Ning would just be straight-faced. She's not even entertaining it. She thinks something is wrong with these people. This is a work event. Why are we talking about the weather? <laughs> Sometimes they would ask her out for a cup of coffee and she would show up with like a briefcase full of business proposals. And they're like, oh, I was just, I just wanted to get to know you. She's funny. And she's like, yeah, well, you can get to know my business. Oh my God. Yeah, she was really, really intense. Like she was so focused on work. She literally forgot how to date. <laughs> and then May of 2017, at one of these networking events in Thailand, which, like I said, there's a strong Chinese community there. So she a lot of Chinese people there. Ning is introduced to a man named Yu. He's also a Chinese citizen. Mm -hmm. But like I said, a lot of her business circle are Chinese expats. So nothing too crazy. But the minute that he opens his mouth, she's like, wait a freaking minute. You're from Nanjing. Right? So in China, every town and city basically has their own dialect of sorts. So mm -hmm. in Shanghai, people speak Mandarin. Well, most people speak Mandarin or okay. Shanghainese. But just because you speak Mandarin doesn't mean you speak Shanghainese. Mm -hmm. So a lot of Chinese people, at least from my personal observation with my husband being Chinese, I feel like there is a closer bond as expats. Like in the US, when he meets someone that's Chinese, he's like, oh, you're Chinese, cool. He meets someone who speaks Shanghainese, he's like, oh my gosh. You are my best friend. We were <laughs> separated at birth. <laughs> it's like me whenever I meet someone who's into K-pop, like in real life, and like not a mutual. I'd be like, holy shit. We have to talk about everything. Not knowing that I'm only two and a half years removed, and they probably like 10. And I sound like a baby. What's going on? So she's, imagine finding out while abroad that someone is from the same hometown as you and speaks the same exact dialect as you. It's this nice, comfortable feeling, you know? You feel closer to them without knowing anything about them. You're like, I feel like I've known you my whole life, even though you just met them. <laughs> and he opens up his mouth and he's speaking the dialect that's native to Nanjing. I mean, what are the odds? She's what if he was stalking her? Since this is already like a movie, what if he already had that plan in mind? That's... Mm. So happy. She's like, this is so freaking wild. It's a piece of home. It was a brief spark. And when he continues to try and carry on the conversation, she's like, okay, I'm over it. This <laughs> has nothing to do with work, so bye. <laughs> and he's like, what just happened? She was so excited that I spoke the same dialect. And then all of a sudden, she's back to being cold. Back <laughs> to being all about business. He's so confused. She's checked out. She's not getting the hint that he's into her. He even tried adding her as a friend on WeChat and she comes home and she sees it on her phone and she's like, what could he possibly want to talk to me about? We're not even in the same industry. Reject. What? Yeah. 
What? Mm. I mean, adding someone as a WeChat friend is like adding someone as a Facebook friend or like accepting a follower on Instagram. It's not like you're giving them your social security number. It's a pretty standard <laughs> thing. <laughs> so she just rejects him. And it only makes him more curious. I want to be like, that locked in. I have never met a woman like this. This is insane. Like, she's so blunt. She's so laser focused on work. And you know that one idea that's like going around on TikTok, the more passionate someone is about something, the more attractive and charismatic they are. That was what was happening. You cannot stop thinking about her. Mm. Now, I don't know how someone rea would react to what he does next, but I guess it really depends person to person. Make your own personal judgment. You All literally right, does not give up. He keeps trying to ask for her contact until she finally caves in. And the minute, I mean, the second that he gets that notification that Ning finally accepted him on WeChat, he's all in. He's actively pursuing her. It's like his new life mission is to pursue this woman. He, he would beg her to go out to eat with him. He would fight to pay the bill. He would take her to Thai lessons together so that they could both learn Thai. Sometimes when she was missing home, he would drive miles out to these random markets to buy supplies to cook her a nostalgic home-cooked meal that reminded her of Nanjing. That literally can go two ways. Like, you could think cuz a weirdo or, like, he's just, like, this amazing person. To me, this seems like weirdo behavior because you're going all in. You don't have, like, a job or anything. Like, you know, balance is a thing, right? Like, you you doing a lot too much, my boy. Relax. Re re relax. You know, at first glance, he's not a bad guy. I he's mean, responsible. Guess. He's very caring. He's financially independent. He's said to have almost this calming aura about him. Mm. It just seems very calm. Like, when you're with him, you feel very well taken care of. Like, mm -hmm. if you guys are outside, something goes wrong, he's the type of person to take charge and figure out a solution. Okay. But in terms of personality, uh oh, they were complete opposites. Oh my god, beyond that. Like Do y'all believe opposites can really attract? I don't I feel like it'll come to a point where it'll be like, bro, this ain't gonna work out. Or I don't know. It depends on tolerance. You was this hopeless romantic. <laughs> really? Yeah, there were like a few key moments early in their relationship that set the tone for their marriage. And Ning is like, what have I gotten myself into? This is crazy. <laughs> maybe it's hindsight. Maybe it's love bombing. It's hard to say. But now looking back, it's a little, um, it's a little creepy. Creepy. So Ning remembered very early on in their relationship. This is at a phase where she didn't even feel like this is a serious relationship. They've been dating for like a month. She wakes up one morning to one of the longest messages she had ever received from a single human being. Oh. It was a message from you. And at the time, it, it felt like him professing his love, some sort of confessional. But now, in hindsight, it a she's like, it's a deranged letter. Oh. I mean, just imagine waking up one morning to a long message from the ah. guy that you're casually dating, and this is what it reads. One month, you said. One month. Oh. And side note, this is shortened for clarity, but it's a very long message. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> it starts. <laughs> Every man imagines their ideal partner. Let me tell you about mine. Nigga, this would be me in middle school when I thought that shit was cool. <laughs> I prefer a southern woman's petite figure. I hope my future partner is beautiful and has a good body figure. She would have long hair, a gentle personality, good morals, and be independent, bright, and cheerful. Because I don't have the best cultural background, I hope my other half has a better education than me so that she can guide our future child. What? She would also be sensible, well-mannered, and have a career. Meeting you is like love at first sight, and I want to grow old with you. Fate has brought us together. Many people would get together because of their age and from family pressure, and under these circumstances, they get forced to be married, but none of them are happy. <laughs> he really thought this was the one. Hey, bro, you could have did so much better without that first part. The first part sounds like you like saying, like, this is who my wife should be. You are this. You are my wife. Like, you could have at least just said it was love at first sight. At least cut the first part out. God damn. What I look for in a marriage is pure love. And after I met you, I didn't just like you. I didn't want to just date you and have a relationship with you. I want to take care of you for the rest of my life. I want to share your pain and your sorrows. If possible, allow me to face all of your hardships. 
if I start a relationship with you, there will be a happy ending. We can have our own family, have our own kids. We can teach them to be good people. If we have a boy, he can learn martial arts, work out, and become a caring man like me. If we have a girl, <laughs> we will treat her like a princess. And when she grows up, she can find a man that loves her as much as I love you. Oh, oh yeah. Wait, that's what like the fuck? Every girl's life purpose, okay? Now that you have me, everything is different. You are no longer alone. You will never be lonely again. All the darkness and pain will go away because of me. After we've become a family, all of this will go away and that's this life will be filled with happiness. Our careers will continue to prosper and we will work hard together and generate wealth for our family. We will have a better life. Let our parents retire with better conditions and provide our children with better learning environments and a better place to grow up and let them just see the world. And when we grow old, it doesn't matter where we are. China, Bangkok, Europe, no matter the place, you and I will be inseparable. This nigga a sucker. Yeah. So, you must believe our meeting was just a coincidence, but I believe it's fate. I hope you can accept my love, hold my hand, and start a new chapter in life. Okay, you know that feeling when <laughs> one person is way more into a relationship the, than the other, and you read this message from a guy that you're, like, kind of lukewarm about? You're just like, whoa, that's a lot. <laughs> like, that is a lot to wake up to. Like, imagine, because, you know, you check your phone before you even brush your teeth. Your eyes are barely open, and you're trying to read this long <laughs> message. Fuck? You're like, it's not that serious. It's really just not that serious. I you got to send a GIF or a GIF. You just got to send a GIF. <laughs> Or just like the message. That will break his heart. Oh, fuck. I feel like I would need to brush my teeth, wash my face, down a cup of coffee, sit on the couch, and reread this three more times to really even grasp what the hell he's even trying to say right now. Like, why is he even sending this message in the middle of the night when I'm dead asleep? It's so random. Because up so thinking about you, girl. He's We're up thinking about you. Yet. He up thinking about you, girl. You on his mind, girl. But uh, Ning does not have that type of time. Uh, so she quickly skims through the message. She gets ready for work, swings open her front door, and she screams like, oh, my God, you scared me. Oh, the nigga's there? At her front door oh, is you. Oh, fuck no. I've been here the whole night since I sent that message. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right. All right. We've had enough of this. You need to get the fuck up out of there. You need to go. You need to leave. You're not doing this shit. No, get out of Get out. Get you out. You what? The fuck is wrong with when you? When I was writing that message, I was thinking about you, and it made me miss you, and I couldn't fall back asleep, so I came here, but then I realized that you're probably asleep, and I didn't want to wake you up because then it would ruin your sleep, so I've just been standing here waiting for you to wake up. For hours, he just stood in front of her front door. He was her fan. Oh. And Ning was kind of confused on how to feel about it. Like, on one hand, it's very jarring and maybe even a little bit creepy. But on the other hand, it's... I guess it's kind of romantic. Nigga, no. And you have to remember, she hasn't really dated much in her life. She's thinking, maybe this is how all hopeless romantics are. Like, maybe they genuinely see themselves in some sort of, like, movie. And I think the deciding factor for Ning to feel like it was more romantic than creepy was, you know, context. You had always been this hopeless romantic, like since the moment that they met. He's even said so himself, like, I have this very idealistic vision of love. Uh, I mean, she could feel it from the moment that they started talking. Uh, the way that he talked about marriage, the way that he talked about all of this. It's like he's in his own little romance novel and he's Prince Charming. He a sucker. And for her, it was kind of endearing in a sense like she's thinking you know if i was with someone that was like me we would never even work out because we would never talk to each other we mm -hmm. would both be so much into our own work and our own worlds we would not even be able to maintain this relationship but since he's the total opposite he's the glue that keeps them talking otherwise she would never reach out to him right so he's like well since i'm here do you want to go to the beach they go to the beach and he rents two small horses uh -huh. i have a picture of this uh -huh. and they ride as the sun comes up. It was like a Prince Charming moment. Why is she at talking one point, like that? As the sun is coming up, just like across the horizon, he gets down from his horse and he stands next to her. And you hear the waves crashing behind him. And he looks into Ning's eyes and said, I can be your Prince Charming. Okay, but he didn't propose, right? No. 
Okay, thank God. Yeah, so within two <laughs> months God. of dating. Yeah, this is. <laughs> hey, her husband, funny as shit. He's, he ain't proposed. Oh, thank God. Okay, we good. <laughs> He's we about good. to propose, so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so within shit. two months of dating, this is all unfolding within two months. Like, she had just met the man two and a half months ago. Okay, uh, scratch what I said about, like, somebody switching up on me after, like, years of marriage or dating. This nigga did this shit within, like, a year. Scratch everything that I said. They started dating officially like two weeks into meeting and it's been two months of having this, what she perceived as a pretty casual relationship. <clears throat> the two of them are enjoying this nice little Saturday evening dinner, just being in each other's company when you all of a sudden is like, we should get married. And she's like, what? You're joking, right? Like, that's crazy. No. I know I love you and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Like, what is the point in waiting now? We're both in our 30s. I mean, we're both of age. What are we waiting for? We're both of and age. And is kind of laughing because she's thinking he's joking. He's crazy. This is this is crazy. But he keeps insisting. Uh-oh. And she tries to reason with him. Well, no, like you haven't even met my parents. My parents would be so upset if I got married to someone and they didn't even approve of him. Mm. I can't just get married out of nowhere. And he tries to convince her that they can just get married first and tell the parents later. They're both independent. They're both successful. They're both of age. Like, they're not even, like, 18. They're in their 30s. Uh -huh. This shouldn't be something that parents need to be involved in. <laughs> I mean, which I can partly agree with, but it's the fact that that's what she wants to do. You should respect it. Even if you feel like the tradition is not your vibe, still respect it. You just kept saying how he's certain about this love. He's certain about the way that he feels about her. He's never felt this way about anyone else before. Oh, God. And honestly, Ning is like, what is going on? Like, this is so unbelievable. I don't even know if he's being serious right now. Mm -hmm. And she just keeps telling him, you're crazy. Like, you're crazy. This is crazy. I can't do this. No. Okay. How about this? We go to the courthouse tomorrow. What? It's Sunday. Courthouses are almost always closed on Sundays. When's the last time you ever saw a courthouse open on a Sunday, right? Right? She said no. We go, and if they're open, that means we're destined to be married tomorrow. If they're closed, fine. We'll come back home, eat a meal, take it slow. No way they were um, open. What kind of a stupid yeah. idea is that? Yeah. Like, he must research this beforehand yeah. what? and ning like, is looking at him like he's crazy but it's so stupid she doesn't take it seriously oh no okay because so she fell f basically got tricked yes because i mean i would imagine i'd be like that's so stupid yeah okay it's fine, not gonna go, go, go home to house tomorrow it's not gonna be open and then we'll probably go get lunch and then i'll go to work after and it'll be open like that's what she's thinking but that shit no was open is open on sundays that motherfucker so the next was morning open. she still thinks that he's just trying to be cute and she's just playing along entertaining him she gets ready for the day she doesn't even get ready for the courthouse specifically she gets ready for her day <laughs> goes to the courthouse and they're freaking open bruh I mean, most likely he paid someone to keep it open or something, yeah. right? Yeah, like what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He had to have, like, what the fuck? How, what? what? What type of pull do you have, sir? And at this point, she was so surprised, she started believing it was fate. She talked herself into it. Uh. She's like, you know what? This is so absurd and so crazy. Maybe it's a sign. Oh, Jesus. Because, again, when was the last time a courthouse is open on a Sunday? Like, this is n marbles, nuts. Oh, no. What the hell? So, okay. Fine, let's Fine, get Fine, let's get married, nigga. We're going to probably get married anyway. She's thinking, you know, let's do it. Uh. Okay, some context to remember is that Ning is in her 30s. The way that she's yeah, approaching I, this relationship is not, let me just date around. Yeah, so, uh, so how I see is like if she's Chinese at that point, she's probably getting pressured every single day by the parents. Like mm. when is you, when are you getting married? Where's my grandkid? And then yes. she probably have that social pressure of, oh, I need to have a kid now. I need to get married now. You know, she feels like her time's running out. That might have pushed her to just, okay, maybe this guy uh. is, is it. Yeah, and I think the logic was, I mean, we're already talking about Gary getting married eventually anyway. I'm not mm -hmm. getting any younger. He's not either. We'll just get married now. And yeah. it was just kind of a cute moment, too. It was romantic. Like, think about it. You're, you're like making a bet. Hey, if the courthouse is open, like, what are the odds? And then you go there and it's open. There might be some adrenaline running like, oh, my God, this is crazy. And that feels like it should be. It sh it's meant to be. Mm-hmm. Like, they already had the plans for the rest of their lives together. So that day, no ring, no wedding, no honeymoon, no parents knowing, they get married. The fuck? And in the moment, it felt romantic. It just felt like two people 
with no stress of having this big luxurious wedding it was just love right Uh they signed that marriage certificate and everything flipped upside down oh an God. immediate 180 oh my you God. went from being a romantic hopeless romantic to an evil husband straight out of one of those k-dramas okay well i don't want to say e- how the fuck does that even ha- how do people be having the like the goal to do shit like that that shit is odd as hell evil? more like a deadbeat husband like the epitome of a useless husband Oh, wow. So I don't know if I can say evil. He's not hitting her. He's not cheating on her, at least that we know of. But he's just so gross. Like, it just made her so confused. The day after they signed their marriage papers. So normally when they would spend the night at each other's places, they would both jump up in the morning, ready to get washed up, both to tackle their to-do list. Like, they were both on the same page of ambition and having that really intense work ethic. But the day after, alarms go off. You stays in bed. He rolls over, grabs his phone, and starts playing phone games, like mobile phone games. What? And she's like, okay, that's weird. He's never done that before. I've actually never even seen him play a phone game in my life. I didn't even know that he was into phone games. Mm. But you don't know your husband. getting ready. Mm. He's still playing phone games. She makes breakfast. He comes out to eat, goes right back to playing mobile games. She's like, what is going on? What the fuck? Okay, maybe he has an off day today. A no man. She goes out to work, comes home. He's still in bed playing mobile games. What the hell? Mobile games. I sound like a boomer (laughs) playing games, okay? And she's like, what is going on? Like, what the hell came over this guy? She's so confused. She's not trying to raise a boy, though. So every single day she would get up and do her things. And it was like every day she'd come home still like, oh, I'm sure today is the day that he goes back to being normal. Mm. But no, still playing games in bed. So what's what going on? Fuck? So he married her for her money? For it her seems Probably, like yeah. To do wow. nothing. Just lay in bed. Damn. That's yeah, fucked he up. He wouldn't even leave the house. All he... All he used to talk about was his budding company, how he wanted to be the CEO, how how he had all these visions of these different endeavors, his future dreams, all of that. And now, now all he does is play phone games. And she's like, the man that I used to know, or I thought I knew, just dissipated into thin air. Now he's like a full-blown deadbeat husband. He was living under her roof, relying on her financially. He was a leech. He was just sucking her dry of energy, love, compassion, That's and money. Up. Not only did he take advantage of her financially, but his loving attitude towards her, gone out the window. Bro, how the hell, like, off the rip? God damn, like, oh my God. So remember how Ning opens a Chinese restaurant? Yeah. So she's just the owner. She doesn't really go in unless they need someone, unless someone cancels, calls out of their shift, or it's like peak hours and they, they're understaffed. Now, he used to come over and help her out when it got really busy. Or if the employees called out, he would go, he would put on an apron, he would just do everything. And she's, she would look at him like, wow, he really is something, right? Wow. Wow. But now she would get called in during peak hours. She'd be like, let's go. Come on, get up. Like, you need to do something with your life. Uh-huh. He would drag his feet to the restaurant plop down on one of the customer chairs no eat food for free and play on his phone what (sighs) wow and she's getting so frustrated because you know what like there's only so much you can nag someone before you're like i don't even have the energy to nag anymore like i genuinely don't he would watch her clean tables, take in orders. He this did nigga nothing sucks. to her, a single thing. Employees said that the worst thing was one time Ning was carrying a ton of stuff from the stock room. She's walking down the stairs, accidentally slips and falls, tumbles all the way from the top of the staircase to the bottom of the staircase. Obviously, this type of thing doesn't happen quietly. Yeah. It's like a series of really loud thuds and bangs back to back. She's probably screaming. Employees are probably like, oh, my God, what happened? Right. Ah. They look over at the husband thinking, okay, like, your wife just tumbled down the stairs. He looks up from his phone, verifies that his wife is not bleeding out dead on the bottom of the stairs, and goes back to his phone. Ew. Doesn't even pretend to care. Not even Bro, a meaningless. what the fuck? Are you good? Ew. Not even that. This nigga like nasty that. as hell. I mean, that would be a problem, but not even that. Like, no reaction. The employees fuck? rush to Ning's side and they stare at each other like what the fork is this guy's problem <laughs> like what kind of husband acts like that 
A leech. Her fall was so bad, it warranted an ambulance ride to the hospital. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Yo. He did not care. So Ning wow. is trying to reason with herself. Maybe it's just a phase. You know, no. maybe she even read online, like, guys go through a phase after getting married because it's this feeling of commitment that becomes overwhelming. Honestly, she was making excuses for him because I'm sure to a degree she also felt trapped. Like, she legally mm. got married in Chinese societies, like anywhere in the world. There is a stigma against divorcees, especially oh, of her age. Fuck. And she's thinking, maybe, maybe it's even my own success. Maybe dating is one thing. You know, maybe when he was dating her, he wanted her to be successful and he wanted to date an ambitious woman. But then she's reading online of all these other women saying that once you get married, it's different. Once men marry women that are more successful than them, it's no longer an advantage. It's no longer a pro. It becomes like this con. Hmm. So she's thinking, okay, maybe, maybe he's dealing with all these emotions. Deep down, she's trying to, she's Stop trying to reason with herself him. and hope that the you that she used to know would make a reappearance. For two months. And randomly, he would be nice. Randomly, he would do chores. He would take out the trash, give her a foot massage, and she would think, okay, thank God. Like, he's back. He's coming back. The man that I fell in love with, he's coming back. Mm. But then he would look up from her feet and ask with a big old grin on his face, can I borrow a few thousand dollars? A few thousand? At first. Can I borrow a few thousand? What? It's a few thousand. Then it's like 10,000. Then a $20,000. What the fuck is you doing all that money? Can I borrow a few thousand? What the hell could you get with all that money? In all honesty, if I was to ask for a couple thousand, it'd probably be something for the house. Like a, like a driveway or something. What are you doing with $10,000? What could you possibly get? You better not get one thing with $10,000 unless it's like a roof or something with the house or like a down payment on a car or something. Even then, no. <laughs> Finally, Ning puts her foot down and she's like, what the hell do you need all this money for? Like, you don't pay rent. You're not even working on your company anymore. So it's not like you need money or funds to expand your business or something's going on with your company. You literally spend every single day laying in bed playing games. Why on earth would you need thousand dollars let alone twenty thousand dollars yeah eventually he confessed that he has a hundred and forty thousand u.s dollars in gambling debt fuck this is the man that used to talk to her with such authority as if he was this aspirational hustling entrepreneur CEO to be. And now he's confessing to the fact that he does nothing with his time and he's in debt from gambling. How do you go that? Mm. Like, can you imagine just the whiplash you would get from something like that? What the but fuck? What can she do? They didn't sign a prenup. And he said that he, he had these aggressive, violent loan sharks that are breathing down his neck every single day. He told her that he never wanted her to get involved in this. This was his problem to take care of by himself, but he was scared for his life. So why would oh, you yeah. get married? Yeah. Laying on so why would you get married? On the bed, taking care of it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What the so fuck? Ning briefly Why would you get him, married? You know? like, well, I don't even know if it's scolding, but kind of what you would expect, like... You shouldn't be gambling in the first place. Like, you shouldn't be taking out loans to gamble. Like, that's so that's dangerous. Insane. Do not know that can ruin your life. That can, I mean, that's an easy way to kill your own future. And if you're dealing with crazy loan sharks, you could end up killing yourself. Jesus Instead Christ. Instead of tucking his tail and being like, I know, I know, I know. I'm going to take accountability. I messed up. I'll never do it again. He straight up starts whining like a child. And he's like, no, I always said no. But my friends would visit and they would make me gamble. They'd be like, let's hit the casinos. What? And like, what? You are 30 years old, dude. The fuck? Yeah, she was so shocked. Ugh. Pinky swore that he would never do it again. And Ning said, you know, I'm not going to. Pinky swears is serious. Those are really serious. I'm gonna pay off all your debt because then you'll never learn. I will pay off half your debt. Oh, that shit. is more than enough. That is generous. And it's more than enough to get the loan sharks off your back to give you enough time yeah. to make up the other half. Holy hell. And she was thinking like she is someone 
who is very empathetic and likes to think the best of people, not even the best of people, but tries to reason with herself. Like she tries to reason with human psychology. She's thinking <gasps> maybe he was so depressed because he was getting all these calls from these loan sharks. He felt like he was in such a deep hole that he couldn't climb out of. Maybe that's why every single day he would lay in bed playing games because he just didn't even know how to tackle this problem, right? Do some push-ups. But now there's a clear solution. Not even that. Ning was like, I'm going to give you one of my businesses to run and I will pay you more than the market competitor price for this type of job for you to pay the rest back. You don't even have bills. So your whole salary just goes to paying back your your loan you're gonna be out of this in no time yeah he ain't take that said at first he was super passionate about his job like super enthusiastic about not only doing his best but transforming the business into something bigger scaling it expanding it ipo vibes you know do you know what business i think it was one of her trading companies like where they would wholesale trade stuff oh yeah and then he was like it's gonna be like an ipo company just you wait it's gonna be public i'm gonna make it like the next amazon and then after a week, he was over it. What? He's literally like a child. I don't know. What the okay, fuck? I'm sure every single one of us has met one of these people. They're so in love with the idea of being a boss or like a CEO, but they have such a phobia for work. <laughs> like they just, they'll sit there and talk about how they're going to scale this to be the next like Fortune 500 company. And then you never see them actually work a day in their life. They're just like at Starbucks in business meetings. But those business meetings are just like telling random people about their business that they're going to start. That was him. Mm. That was him. And then one day you said that he had a meeting with the client for work. She's like, okay, well, maybe he's going to enter his phase of being determined and motivated again, and then that's going to die off in a week. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> he leaves early in the morning, and Ning is getting ready to hang out, head out. She's brushing her teeth when she gets a phone call. Hello? It's her accountant asking her why she just transferred $700,000 from her account. Bro, pay off your fucking bills, dude. Pay off your debt, cuz. Just pay it off, bro. Transfer out 700 USD? USD. Ha! Wow. What the hell? And she's like, what? I didn't transfer out $700,000. Why would I do that? Hold on. I'm about to run out the door and go to the bank and see what's going on. She spit out the toothpaste, ran to her bag to run out the door, but one glance inside, her wallet is gone. Oh. He wouldn't, right? Nah, like, he that's would. That's crazy. He nah, wouldn't he do would. That. He would. She runs to it's the our money. in the corner of the room. Their marriage certificate is gone, as well as other personal identifi identification oh, documents of nah. hers were gone. So he, nah, bro, you can't tell me he wasn't planning this shit. He had to be planning this. He stalked that woman to do some shit like this, to be a fucking leech and then try to knock her off. That's, no, that's fucked up. So he used this at the bank to be like, look, this is my wife. This is our joint account. And like basically tricked the bank into allowing this transfer. She stood there not even knowing how to feel. Like this man that she married, her husband, stole $700,000 from her. She didn't know how to feel if she should feel angry, sad, manipulated, gross, betrayed. She grabbed her phone from her pocket and she keeps trying to call this guy. No answer. So she's like, you know what? I have no choice. She goes to the police station and reports him. At this point, Ning's life was at her lowest. Her husband just stole $700,000 from her. I mean, she still had a lot of money left. I think her assets totaled to be around $3 million at this point. Still, I'm not that's sure like much. almost a third of... of our assets were in cash. But even then, I think it's just the principle of her husband stealing yeah, money. Yeah, like... Uh. And the emotional trauma of all of that. I mean, he knew. He was the only person in the world that knew how hard she had worked her entire life. Like, how much she had sacrificed to be this career woman. She didn't even date. She didn't have friends. Mm -mm. And even though he knew all of this, he betrayed her. Yeah, fuck and that nigga. And just before this incident, there was a really bad fight that they had. Oh. Where Ning was, she found out that she was pregnant. And her life was completely fine before meeting you. You know, sure, she would have moments where she felt a little bit lonely. She saw everyone else around her getting married, having families. She hated calling her parents because they would inevitably ask, when are you going to find someone? When are you going to give us grandchildren? But other than that, her life felt so stable. Like she was very content. She knew exactly what her future was. She knew what she was doing. Mm -hmm. And then after meeting this man, it's like her life was a toilet bowl. It's just spinning down the drain. Mm. 
They get married. Everything starts falling apart in the matter of a year or two. It's like a car accident that she can't stop watching. And she's got front row tickets. She's about to get hit by a car. And now she's pregnant with a husband who can't even do the bare minimum. Not only could he not just exist and be invisible, but he's constantly making her life worse. Like her life is not even neutral because of him. Her life is harder because of him. And she's so upset. She's stressed about bringing a baby into this type of home. She's overwhelmed with all of her responsibilities. And when she told him the news of her pregnancy, he was drunk and he angrily said, well, I don't want a kid right now. If you want to abort it, abort it. If you want the baby, you can raise it on your own. Hey, Slim. I'm... Mm. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not for violence or domestic violence, but if I ever said that to my wife and she slaps the shit out of me, I wouldn't be mad. Like, if she hits me with a bottle, like with that bottle, I probably would not be mad because why the fuck would you say some shit like that? Like, nigga, what? That will probably be grounds for just snapping. Wow. He said abort. Once again, I'm not for domestic violence, but... Hey. It. It. Nah, that's crazy. The man that she thought she was marrying was gone. Mm -mm. She had sat alone in her home, like waiting for the police to catch her husband for stealing her money. And she would reread that message that he had sent her before they got married. And the words just stung. He wrote, we can have a family, work hard and have kids. We can teach them to be good people. Ugh. If we have a boy, he can learn martial arts, work out and become a caring man like me. If we have a girl, we'll treat her like a princess. And Ugh. when she grows up, she can find a man that loves her as much as I love you. It just felt like everything he had ever said to her was a complete and utter lie. Yeah. So after a full week, the police find you and he confesses to stealing $700,000 from his own wife. He stated that he lost it all in the matter of a week. Due no. To ga How? How? Gambling. How? How? Just pay your people back and don't gamble. Slim, how can people have this much of an, a gambling addiction? You have almost a million dollars. You are like 100000 in debt. That 100000 you still have 60% of that million. Why are you gambling? You already have over half a million dollars. Why are you fucking gambling? Nigga, what the hell? He lost almost a million dollars. Okay, it's not almost, oh but... Oh, my gosh. $700,000. Wow. Bro, how? The what police station called Ning, and they're like, hey, we got your husband. You want to come down here? She walks in through the doors and he runs to her. He slumps down onto his knees and he's sobbing in front of everyone. And there was snot coming down his face. And he said that he just wanted to Bro, confess to everything, just be clean. He wanted to bare his soul to her. He admitted to stealing her money. He admitted to losing $700,000 to gambling. But also, he revealed that he was jailed for 12 years in the past for robbery and theft. What he the served fuck? eight years in prison and had only been out for the past three years before he met Ning. How did none of this come up in pro He lied about his whole life. And what can you do because she can't even pursue anything because that's yeah. her husband. Yeah. Right? But also the father of her soon to be child. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. What the fuck? He said he lied about his whole life because he wanted her, he wanted to feel like he was good enough for her. He said, you know, I really do love you and I knew that you wouldn't want to date someone like me. So I lied. So when it comes up, I'll just feel bad and say sorry. But we're here now. So let's just keep going. Stupid ass logic. You stupid. Most of his 20s that he lied and said that he was trying to build businesses, he was in prison. Ugh. He wanted to, which nothing is wrong with that. Well, depending on the crime, maybe, right? But still, the fact that he yeah, it's lied. Just dishonest, yeah. yeah, it's just so manipulative. Yeah, like, just lie. be honest about it. And I'm sure there will be someone out there that is okay with it and loves you for you. But why would you lie about it? He said now he wants to lay it all on the table so he can be the man that he truly thinks he can be and the man that she deserved him to be. 
He begged her for one more chance. Even though he knew that he didn't deserve it, he said that. He's like, even though I know I don't deserve another chance, like, you don't have to, but like, can you find it in the goodness of your heart to just give me like one last chance? Wow. Like, this guy is so good with his words. He's a master manipulator. I will give him that. Ning said that she would think about it. She didn't even say yes right away. She was like, just, I don't even know what to say to you right now. I'm just going to go home. He goes home, and that next morning, he's a new man. He wakes up bright and early, draws the curtain, starts cleaning the house top to bottom. He co- he cooks healthy pregnancy meals for Ning, rubs her feet, rubs her back, giggling in her Hey, I'm going to just say this right now. This is probably not good advice, but take this with a grain of salt or whatever the saying is. If somebody says they're going to change, give them a month. Because you know I've said this before that it takes like almost a month for people to change like their whole actual like just just to actually become a different person like to change habits. Give them a month. If they're consistently doing it for a month, then think about actually like letting whatever they did slide. Don't just give them like a couple days. You know, like, no, give them a month. That should be the threshold. A month. Her, hear, her ear about how nice it's going to be when they have a kid, how his plans for the nursery. He would leave little post-it notes around the house, little love letters Nigga. for Ning when she comes home from work. The minute that she walked in, she would smell fresh cooked, home cooked meals. You know, if he did, if he was doing all this and he had all the energy to do this, he could have actually bid something about himself and paid off that $100,000 in debt. Just crawling up her nostrils. It would smell so delicious. And it just felt like her hopeless romantic husband was back. Mm-mm. And one night, while rubbing her back, you told her, you know, my cousin works in the insurance industry. No. Oh, my gosh. They said that we need to get life insurance since we have a little one on the way. He said it's really standard. Everyone does it. You know, oh, it's time no. to start thinking about our child's future, too, you know? No, 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 And then no. kind of smiled. It was kind of heartwarming when you think about it. You was going around asking family members for tips on what to do now, now that he was about to be a dad. Mm. And his cousin happened to be in the in- insurance industry and was like, you know, here's a big tip. He was taking it very seriously. He had even thought of something that had slipped Ning's mind. It was something that she didn't even think about. She's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Of course we need life insurance. Mm. We're going to be parents. It is the responsible thing to do. Mm -hmm. Well, it was all a lie. Mm. Her whole, the marriage was a lie. The hopeless romantic was a lie. Even the insurance thing was a lie. I mean, trust me, he got the life insurance, but it's not because his cousin works in the industry. Ning realized it when she woke up at the bottom of the cliff. At first, she didn't even know where she was. She was out for like 40 minutes. She was unconscious for 40 minutes. Her eyes adjusted to the bright light and she could see these clouds and leaves in a sky. And she's like, where am I? And it was honestly kind of beautiful for a second. What the fuck? And then it was painful. Oh. Slowly, everything started coming back to her. She felt the cold rocks just jabbing into her body. Her whole body felt like it had been hit by an 18-wheeler that reversed and then ran over her again. God she tried damn. to scream, but she couldn't even she couldn't even talk. Nothing would come out. And even if she could scream, would someone even hear her? Nobody was at the cliff when they were up there. Is it like a miracle that she lived? Or? Yes. So she actually hit a bunch of massive tree branches. Oh. So she thumped on multiple tree branches on the way down, and uh-huh. that kind of saved her from the impact. Had mm. she fallen directly onto the rocks, she would have died. Uh. So it's not like she fell fully 11 stories. It's like she fell, hit tree, then hit another tree, then hit another tree, oh, and then shit. hit the ground. What the hell? I mean, her body was still obliterated and like shattered, but yeah, it, it was a miracle that there were so many tree branches in that particular spot. Uh, yeah, because otherwise... Don't you think he would have gotten away with this? And he would have gotten millions of dollars because wow. she was the beneficiary. He also was entitled to all of her earnings and all of her wealth. And the life insurance, I don't know exactly how much it was, but he would have walked away a rich man. What the A hell? killer and a rich man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And she just, she laid there. She couldn't scream. All she could think about were how her husband had told her the hateful words, Go die. Like, imagine waking up knowing that your husband that you trusted threw you off a cliff after saying, go die. 
，感受到了他一股非常强大的力量。I feel like the words "go die" are worse than just throwing someone off a cliff.、Mm-hmm. It's、yeah. so like. It's like you don't even feel guilty. Yeah. You don't even have a moment of sadness. Yeah, it's not even、Just、a moment pure of pure evil. And it's it's you don't even see her as a human. And I th- I think that's the only time that he actually expresses how he truly feels about her. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Th- this is like, you know, someone's about to die. So you don't care. You can you, he can finally say how he really feels.、Mm. Yeah. You know、That's、what I mean,、fucked. and、That's、this is、fucked. what he chose to say. That's go、fucked. die, go die. Yeah, yeah. Like that's a level of hatred that I don't understand. Even pushing someone off a cliff is a level of hatred I don't understand. But this is an added layer of evil. Yeah, yeah. So, side note, you did wait around the cliff for about thirty minutes to make sure that she was dead and not screaming for help.、The、Thankfully,、fuck? Ning was passed out and did not scream, so she would regain consciousness after he already left. I don't know what he would have done、mm. if she had screamed while he was there. 整个崖底非常的寂静，除了鸟叫和风呼啸而过的声音，其他什么声音都听不见。那是一种非常摄人心魄的一种寂静，根本不可能有任何人来这里或者经过这里。我所面临的就是等待着，或者是见证着自己的死亡。Wow.、Mm. And、God、even damn, more fortunately,、bro. that day there weren't a lot of tourists, but one of the tourists that were there at the national park got lost. They went off the trail and were like trying to get back on the trail. Ended up at this area at the bottom of the cliff, and found Ning. Wow. Ning felt hot tears dripping down her face. She was unable to move. She just felt someone holding her hand, and this person was screaming at her, "You're safe. You're safe. It's okay. You're safe. I'm gonna get help." The ambulances were called, and this is crazy because Yu was driving out of the park area. But as he's exiting, he sees the ambulances coming into the park、oh, area. Now, let's be real; he knows exactly what the ambulances are for and who it's for. So, what does he do? He parks his car, waits for the ambulances to leave, and he starts following the ambulance to the hospital. And the minute that Ning is taken out of the stretcher, he's screaming in Thai, "My wife! My wife! What happened? Where did you go? Why did you? Why did you wander off alone? You have to save my precious wife!" Oh no! And he whispers in Mandarin, like no one speaks Mandarin. There were no cameras. If you don't want to die, behave yourself. The fuck? He told the hospital staff that his wife was pregnant and feeling dizzy. She had wandered off from the trail to get some fresh air and accidentally fell off the cliff. He tried looking for her for about thirty minutes, but because she had wandered away from him, he didn't know exactly where she had even fallen or like where she had gone. He thought maybe she had walked down the that down the mountain. He didn't even know that she fell off the cliff. Fuck this guy. So after about thirty minutes, he got in the car to go look for some help to get the police, but he saw the ambulances, so he followed the ambulances, just. In the hopes that it wasn't his wife. Well, he is really good at、yeah. making up stories. Later, when Ning was able to gain consciousness and could speak again, authorities asked her what happened, and she glanced at her husband and said, "I was dizzy. I must have fallen off the cliff." No. no. So at this point, where Ning stands is, she doesn't really know Tai that well. She doesn't know Tai authorities that well. I think that things would have played out differently if she had been in China. Mm. Right, so she's not exactly sure how to play these cards because she doesn't have proof that he pushed her.、Oh. She doesn't know if these officers are even going to believe her. And most of the hospital staff, they felt bad for her. Right, everyone was like, "Oh my God!" But thankfully, you have your husband with you. Right, thankfully, you survived.、Yeah. But there was one nurse who called the cops, and she was like, "By chance, this is crazy. Okay, I speak Mandarin." What? Oh,、yeah. this one nurse is like, "I speak Mandarin. It's my second language." And the husband, like they were in their room. Oh, sick! In the ICU, and when she was finally able to talk again, when the wife was able to talk again, I heard her screaming—not screaming, but like kind of crying. Why did you do this to me in Mandarin? Oh, the nurse oh, just heard. Oh, wow! No, the minute she heard, she called the cops. Oh, because this is after a few days. Shout out to her. her. What the, the nurse、oh. never like butt in, like, hey,、no. what do you mean? So she heard this, and she's like, oh my god, I gotta call the cops. The- Shout out to nosy people. Good shit. Good shit, nurse. Husband did it. Yeah. Oh fuck. Wow. Holy、so、scadoodle. The police, right, and the police do probably the worst thing possible that made Ning not trust them. They immediately confront you, and it's like, hey, why did why was your wife saying why did you do this to me?
Why do police be doing some dumb ass shit? Like, I don't understand. You was like, what? Oh, that she was yelling at me because I wasn't taking well enough care of her when she was pregnant and I made her go to the national park. And then she was upset because I wasn't holding her hand the whole time. And like, I wasn't making sure that she wasn't getting uh. dizzy. So yeah, she was screaming like, why did you do this to me? Because I wasn't taking care of her. Like it was my carelessness. Nah. They would ask Ning and because they're literally asking her in front of her husband, she's like, yeah, that's, that's why I said that. Bruh. And this helped you relax a lot. He was no longer staring her down every second of every day in the hospital. In, in fact, he felt good enough to go to breakfast every morning. What? Yeah, he would leave, go eat breakfast each morning. And on one of those mornings, Ning waited for that nurse. And she grabbed her hand. She felt this adrenaline pumping in her body. And she said, please. She didn't want to say too much. She just said, please, my husband makes me nervous. It's making me depressed. Do I have to have him in the room all day? And the nurse looked at her and said, okay, yeah, let me talk to the doctors. The doctors did what they should do, not what the police did. Instead of being like, hey, husband, you're making your wife uncomfortable. You can't be here every day. They just inform you, hey, so we just changed our hospital rules right now. And guests now have to abide by visiting hours. I know, I know it sucks, but we were just having too many guests stay over and it's mm. become a safety hazard. So mm. there will now just be visiting hours and you can only visit during those specified hours. Okay. And slowly, without you's constant presence, Ning starts opening up slowly to the nurses and she doesn't tell them right away. She wanted a guarantee that she would have some level of protection when she's released because the worst case would be the police investigate her claims, find no evidence, and they basically tell you like your wife is talking and they're like, sorry, you got to move on with your life and we got new cases. She would be out of the hospital without any protection from her husband who clearly tried to kill her. Mm. So she was really worried about that. Thankfully, the police promised. They were like, we promise we'll protect you. Pinky Just promise. Tell us what happened. Pinky promise. She opened up and they followed through. They arrested you. Mm, okay, good. Brought in for attempted homicide charges. And in March of 2020, his trial began. This is 10 months after the incident. Oof. You was pretty emotionless during the entire trial. He pled not guilty. He was very calm, almost indifferent. Meanwhile, the state pre presented the motive. You is in debt. He's employed, unemployed, recently pulled out life insurance for his wife with himself listed as the beneficiary. And with all of his wife's assets, he stood to gain more than $3 million. So yeah, it makes sense that he killed his wife. Very quickly, he was pronounced guilty oh, wow. and sentenced to life in prison. Yeah, get this him out of here. This is the first time he gets emotional during the trial. And he gets up and like a little boy, like a little kid, he starts whining. Why does everyone believe Ning and not me? I'm innocent. I'm not lying. He would appeal, resulting in a second trial in Thailand. And if you're wondering where he gets it all from, the apple does not fall far from the tree. Oh, no. His mom is giving typical, my son could never, my son is perfect, he's basically Jesus reincarnated, an absolute angel, the drugs and gun in his room, he's just keeping it for a friend. The girl that he's holding hostage in the basement, she's a whore anyway. Like, It's two sides of me right now. One side is that the mom is not going to go against her son. I respect that. The second side is, lady, your son is the devil reincarnated. But I respect you for, you know, showing up for your son. But lady, come on now. Come on. Don't be dumb. Don't be stupid. He's still going to jail forever. But it's nice to know that your perception of your son is, hey, okay, that's good. Our, his perception of life is going to be a, a, a wall, okay? That's the vibe that his mom gives. That's the exact energy throughout the entire trial. Her son could do no wrong. She comes to court and tries to argue that the state's motive that her son wanted money from Ning was a complete and utter lie. It was bullshit, she said. Why? Because he had a successful business that made even more money than Ning's little business. His mm -hmm. business was bringing in tens of millions of dollars a uh, year. All right. As evidence, she pulled out a company business card and identified herself as a shareholder of the company. With very minimal surface level investigations, it was revealed the company does not exist and the business uh -huh. cards were made using Photoshop. <laughs> <What>? Yeah. <laughs> the fuck?
but she it's, thought it's that like people would so. just take a look at her business card and take her word for it that the business was making tens of millions of dollars a year. And she was like, you don't know because it's in China. And Thailand <laughs> no. was like, well, we do know. All we had to do was some quick search and some quick little chats with Chinese diplomats. Oh, my God. Your business doesn't even exist. Oh, shit. Side note, she, the mom, did later reach out to Ning and said, I'm sorry. I think I was too greedy. I wanted too much, and I put too much pressure on my son, which caused him to do this. Again, what? Even just, like, how is that sufficient for an apology after your son tried to murder his pregnant wife? Like, oh, I just put so much pressure. He was so stressed he did this. So you want me to blame you? is a way better person than I could ever be. She did not lash out at the mom. Instead, she wisely and coolly just texted, yeah, well, everything has cause and effect. I would have said some shit like that, too. (laughs) (laughs) And that was that. Finally, March 24th, 2021, you was convicted of attempted homicide and sentenced to life in prison. He was also ordered to pay Ning $180,000 in compensation. But let's be real. How was he going to pay that back? Meanwhile, Ning had lost almost everything. She couldn't work for a long time since she Mm. had multiple steel plates placed in her body. Her legs can't even bend properly. The music. She has 200 stitches. She can't even use the toilet properly. She has to, to this day put her body up against the wall or handle of the side of the restroom and slowly support her body to squat down because her legs don't work. Oh. Every morning after waking up, she needs to do three to four hours of rehabilitation exercise or she could lose her ability to walk. Fuck. She could lose all of her progress. And it's not just painful, but it's repetitive. It's boring. It takes so much of her time. Mm. And the worst part is she can't be independent anymore. And again, this is a woman who values independence so much. The most that she could even do to take care of herself was brush her teeth. And even that took her so much strength. She couldn't use the restroom alone. She couldn't shower alone. Her little sister had to quit her job and be her 24-7 caretaker. And it just (sighs) broke her heart to see her sister give up everything to take care of her. During her recovery, she had the most awful news. From the morphine and all the medication she had to take after the attempted murder, her child was no longer viable to survive outside of the womb and add to that with ning's current state even her attempting to give birth would likely result in her own death Mm. so the doctors were like this baby is not going to survive outside of the womb anyway and it will most likely kill you to give birth my god bro so she lost her child she lost her husband she lost her child her independence her career and her trust in i don't know humanity all at once Fuck. She still had to undergo eight different surgeries, and for about a year, she said it was just nonstop mental breakdowns. And then in 2022, like early 2022, she picked herself up from rock bottom and said, why am I doing this? I am a successful woman, and I can be successful again. Yeah. So she started social media. Yeah. Back on her feet. Let's go. As of 2023, she doesn't cry anymore about what happened. She said that she had time to reflect. And side note, netizens really broke down like every part of this case. And they really used it as a way to showcase how people can be so manipulative in relationships. And these aren't even, I guess, at the time, netizens were under the belief that the biggest red flag is someone hitting you. Like, you always think, okay, if someone kills their partner, there must be some evidence of violence up until that point, right? But this was a huge wake-up call. Mm -hmm. There might never be violence until one day they kill you. Yeah. They also noted something in the letter that I think is very, very true. Um, A lot of netizens said that one thing that stood out was in his initial letter to her before they got married, he keeps talking about how... The whole letter is so narcissistic. It's all about what he wants, what his wife can do for him, 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 him. And then what he brings to the table is like, I'm going to fix your life. But her life doesn't need to be fixed. Her life is better than your life, right? Niggas niggas said she was lonely. Like, hello? One thing a lot of um, female netizens pointed out was... If you ever meet a guy that says that they want you to have a gentle personality and yet be career driven, that basically means they want you to make money, work hard, but still be submissive. 
And a lot of female netizens were like, this is the biggest red flag these days. When mm -hmm. people say they want a woman who has a career, but still has a gentle personality, because women are saying, do you know how hard it is to maintain a gentle personality if you're out there working? <laughs> like that literally, you cannot have both at the same time. It's impossible. <laughs> so they're like, that's the biggest red flag people need to look out for now. So guys, look out for that. And the whole letter is just, it's a mess. Do you guys think the letter was a mess? Like, did you get it from the get go, or do you feel like it's hindsight? Let me know. Yeah, it's bro. At the be the 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 shit started off like boo boo, but then it tried it kind of like gained some legs. But it started off so bad. Like, why would you say that? Like, no, that letter was ass. He's a sucker. It's weird. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's a it weird was letter. a weird letter. Yeah. It doesn't feel romantic. Yeah, it doesn't feel sincere. It doesn't. That feel shit was warm. not romantic yeah. at all. <laughs> What are you saying? I thought it was a it's cultural thing. I was going to shut like up. Long hair, good figure. Like, it's yeah. like, whoa. If I read that in a letter, I'd be like, this is very creepy. Yeah. Anyway, the Ning music. had to basically start from scratch again. She lost her business. She, mm. from not being able to work all the time, a lot of money was poured into not only fighting the legal battles and her recovery, you know, rehab, physical rehab, all of her medical bills, traveling from Thailand back to her home country, like everything. It just... It was a lot of cost, mm. but Ning remains positive. It's so interesting. So she was interviewed and she was asked, looking back on the past three years, when was the darkest moment of your life? Like, how did you even survive this? She said, from the moment that he pushed me down the cliff till the moment that I could stand up on my own, every moment between that was dark. Mm. The event destroyed my life. I mean, my little family was gone. My lover betrayed me. My child was gone. My health was gone. My career was destroyed. All my plans were gone. My life was in ruins. I was a successful person before this. I lived a decent life. And for someone like that to go from being independent to urinating and defecating in bed every day, mm. it is a level of torture and humiliation that you won't understand unless you experience it yourself. My parents are older, so they they were helping me recover. But I was thinking, you know, when my parents get even older, I'm supposed to help them. But are they going to be old, barely alive and helping me? Or will all of us just lie in bed together and look at each other as we die? And I thought, how can I prevent this, you know? And my only option that I could think of was I got to get better. She said, you know, I've seen the best of people. I've seen the worst of people. And it's made me feel some relief at least because now I've seen it all and I have courage to face my new life. She also said that she's very happy that her story can inspire netizens to get out of bad relationships. And she also said 17 bone fractures, over 200 stitches, Fuck. multiple surgeries. What doesn't kill me does make me stronger. And she said, my flash marriage with him was extremely risky and it's my fault that i didn't do my homework and investigate i hope everyone can learn get to know people more take them to your parents you can also investigate through formal means to see if they've been involved in criminal or civil cases or if they have debt yes it's easy to search people up hey do your googles do your googles it's so easy to search people up if you meet somebody do a background check bro you not weird if you do a background check, bro. You got to be safe. You got to be safe as hell. These are things I didn't do, and I hope everyone knows this, and they start doing this. Protect yourself. Protect yourself. Protect yourself. Sorry, I'm going to move my thing over here. Just for this. This too. We'll get that out of there. Okay, here we go. She's a hustler though. Like god damn. Jesus Christ. Real hustler. Yeah.
Make me tear up. Oh, shit. Is is that like... when she was asked if she still believes in love and marriage, she said, Marriage is beautiful. Love is beautiful. And I don't think that he can represent marriage or love because mm. he's not worthy of either. Hey. And she is now active on Douyin. She, I mean, I'll just say, like, her ability to take this in strides and really come out stronger on the other side is not only impressive, but it's like impressive as fuck. Unbelievably inspiring. Hell yeah. So, God damn. what are your thoughts on this case? Nigga. I thought it was, it was very strange in the sense that, I mean, statistically, it's the husband or it's always the wife, right? But just the way it went down, it was enough red flags to know that he's a toxic person. But yeah. was it enough red flags to know that he was a killer? No. It's terrifying. Yeah. What are your mm. thoughts? Please stay Amen. safe and I will see you guys on Sunday for the mini-sode. Hey, man, listen. I'm so glad she was able to take this terrible time and build herself up to be, yeah, likes that for real. That's, I'm going to be honest, that's very inspiring, bro. That would have broke me so hard. Like, I would just say, fuck it, just let me die. Like I said before, but nah, she said, fuck all that. <laughs> hey, hey, man, listen, first things first, fuck that nigga is a sucker. I'm glad he in jail, too. I hope... I, I don't really, I don't know what to say to that. But shout out to her though, bro. Like sometimes it feels like, I don't even want to say like what I was really about to say. Like sometimes I feel like this story, like this story is just, life can, life can hit you fast as hell. It's like life can hit you and mess your whole shit up. Like one decision can really change your whole life. You know what I'm saying? But I'm so glad that, she was able to get get uh get through this, bro. God damn. This is not really a happy ending. Well, it is a happy. I think it's a happy ending. Does this count as a happy ending? I'm 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 glad she was able to get back to what she was doing. That that part was actually about to make me cry though. But what do y'all think? You know what I'm saying? Let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. And please, y'all, stay safe. Do your Googles and do your background checks. And also, if somebody sent you some bullshit ass message like that. Don't give in. Them is just words, okay? Don't give in. Shit. You nigga proposing too much. Nigga, get the fuck out of here. Fuck you. That's why you in jail now, bitch. God damn. Hate niggas like you. Shit. And his name is you. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. Y'all have a good day.